A Christian man who was accused of verbally abusing two women because their relationship went against the teachings of the Bible has had his Public Order Act charges against him dropped. When John Dunn was charged, the Crown Prosecution Service said, there are references in the Bible which are simply no longer appropriate in modern society and which would be deemed offensive if stated in public. After the case was discontinued, John Dunn said, when I preach, I only ever say what is in the Bible. When they told me they were in a same-sex marriage, I was concerned for them. I had to communicate the consequences of their actions based on what the Bible says. So to discuss this, I'm joined by Michael Phillips, a lawyer who worked on behalf of John Dunn. <laughs> Thanks for coming to the show, Michael. Um, so talk us through this case. It's now, the charges have, have now been dropped. Is it concerning, however, that the Crown Prosecution Service are effectively saying to Christians, you can't quote your holy book? It's extremely concerning. I mean, the Bible is really what has formed in large part uh, the basis of our society, uh, the basis of constitutional law. And over the years, there have been various attempts uh, by our country to outlaw it. However, over the years, we've had more and more freedom. And that, in turn, has established the precedent that, that we have free speech in this country if on the basis of, uh, in fact, what the, uh, the UN Declaration of Human Rights and it went on the European... Um, Union's uh, own version of that. And so we have these freedoms in the United Kingdom as a result of the battles that were fought by many Christians over the centuries. Now, I can understand why the two women in question found it offensive uh, to be told that he disapproved of their relationship. That makes complete sense to me. I think where I draw the line is why that should then become a criminal matter, because we're all likely to be offended by all sorts of things, aren't we? Well, exactly. I mean, the thing is this, is that there is this misnomer amongst the police and also some sections of the Crown Prosecution Service that to offend is an offence. And it just simply isn't the case. The law recognises that we are allowed to be offended. What you're not allowed to do is you're not allowed to threaten somebody. You're not allowed to abuse. But abuse is not the same as just to offend somebody. But it's part of the problem that some of this stuff is actually encoded within law. If you take the 2003 Communications Act, it says that uh, if someone posts material that is deemed grossly offensive, they can be prosecuted and sent to jail. Mm -hmm. But how do we know what is grossly offensive? Who decides that? I mean, really, does something so ambiguous, should that really be on the statute books? Um, we don't think so. I mean, I think the thing is this, is that there was a uh, decision by Parliament a little while ago to remove the word insulting from Section 5 of the Public Order Act. And mm. there are certain statutes which we would argue are simply not compliant with the free speech principles which are embodied in our own common law and also uh, that from the European uh, Court of Human Rights. So where is the CPS coming from then? Are they just sort of arbitrarily uh, deciding what is acceptable and what is not acceptable? Or are they grounding absolutely everything they do in law? I mean, I, I'm not too sure what happened with this Crown Prosecutor, whether they just Googled something and, and extracted it from an atheist website and just said, you know, the Bible supports cannibalism, the Bible supports the death penalty, the Bible supports slavery, so you can't say those things anymore. And it was just ignorant. Well, you think it's someone going rogue in the CPS? Well, it seems as though this particular person had no particular references. They, they just plucked Bible references completely out of context and said, you can't say certain things anymore. But isn't that the case for all holy books? So did they do that with the Quran? Well, I mean, uh, I think the thing is this, is that when you look at the Bible, if you look at it in context, you will see that, in fact, it is not offensive in the way in which they deemed it to be offensive. Well, I think there are elements of the Bible that people will find offensive, no doubt. And I think there's elements of the Quran that people will find offensive. But mm. these are people's holy books and, you know, they have to have a right to, to, to say them. I mean, particularly preachers. And uh, this man, Dunn, was a preacher, right? Yeah, so he, he was somebody who was in the Special Forces. For 15 years, he's been on the streets day in, day out. And as a result, has seen drug addicts, people who are, you know, a burden to society, set free as a result of preaching the gospel every day. And one such person was also prosecuted in the same course and acquitted earlier on this year. But do you take the point that, I mean, the counter-argument is that if you have offensive ideas mm. promulgated throughout society, then what happens is it, it kind of enables those ideas to spread, it makes attacks on gay people more likely, mm. or whatever else. Do, do you buy that? No, I don't think so. I mean, I think the thing is, is that in order to suppress things which are bad ideas, you've got to have more free speech, not less free speech, because you've got to have people who are articulate in order to say, no, that is not what the, uh, the Bible teaches. And in fact, we don't believe that. Isn't this troubling coming from a, a lawyer's perspective? Because it's not just the judiciary, is it? It's also the police. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've seen again and again the College of Policing, for instance, uh, t telling police that they should be investigating non-crime. Mm -hmm. I know that recently has been rescinded, but that was something that was going on for many, many years. The, the College of Policing seems quite uh, uh, reluctant uh, to actually uh, address these issues when it is asked to do so. The High Court said to them, 
it's unlawful to record mm -hmm. non-crime, and they ignored it. The, the Home Secretary said it's unlawful, and they ignored her as well. So mm -hmm. is it just that these quangos are kind of out of control? I think it's the whole cultural zeitgeist which is affecting every single part of our society. And constantly you have to push back with the police and with the Crown Prosecution Service and say, look, you know, that just simply isn't right. I mean, with the Harry Miller case, which went to the High Court, there was a police officer who, he said, called around because they were concerned about his thinking. Because a transgender person was somebody who has uh, the wrong brain and it's pushing out the wrong body parts. And this is apparently something what uh, the officer said to him. Mm. Now, and then, you know, it's one thing to kind of say that to somebody, but it's another thing to have a police officer call at your door, maybe arrest you, maybe put you in their cells, because you have said something or hold a belief, and articulated that belief, which some people find offensive. But what happens if, I mean, we're saying the CPS now are effectively, or elements of the CPS are effectively ideologically captured like this, and they now believe that being offensive should be criminalised. What if that seeps into the high courts? It doesn't seem to be there at the moment, but what if that happens? Well, I think it's going to be disastrous, you know, if... if, if... Uh, it is the case because usually people get arrested and then they get released or sometimes they get prosecuted and then they get acquitted. Yes. Usually the judiciary say, well, hang on a second, you know, this isn't the case. This is protected uh, by free speech. No, you are not guilty. However, you know, if people get start finding, uh, be found guilty by the High Court, then that, is, that would be a worry. So what is the way to tackle this? Is it that the government needs to push, needs to repeal the current hate speech laws that we have, which mm -hmm. take the form of the Public Order Act and the Communications Act at the moment, do they just have to go? I think very often it's not necessarily a problem with the laws themselves, but it's uh, very often sometimes the people on the ground and their interpretation of right. them. And so that, that is probably the biggest problem that we face. But is uh, it the CPS's face? job to interpret the law? I mean, that's what they're there for, isn't well, it? Well, they are there in order to act on behalf of the Crown, to be independent and to look at this. You know, they're, they're not there to take sides. They're not somebody's lawyer. They're there acting as the state, as the independent voice in order to say, yes, there is enough evidence in order to prosecute this matter and also it is in the public interest to prosecute this particular matter. And unless those two tests are satisfied, then they should not be prosecuting somebody. OK, well, uh, it's a very fascinating case. Michael Phillips, thanks very much for joining me today.